Hey, what's up guys? John Joseph here, back with another helpful video. And in this video, I'll be showing you guys seven helpful Windows 10 tips and tricks that I use every day. Let's get straight into it. Tip number one, numbered icons on the Windows taskbar. This tip should increase your speed and you know, your multitasking speed, the way you switch between apps and also the way you open apps. Basically what happens is Windows 10 numbers the icons that you put on your taskbar from one to however many. And since they are numbered, what you can do is by pressing and holding the Windows key and the number that corresponds to your, to your icon that will go ahead and launch that icon. So for example, on my taskbar currently, I have Outlook and File Explorer all the way down to, and then all, all the way to the end I have Opera. So if I wanted to quickly launch Windows Chrome, as you can see, Windows Chrome on my taskbar is at position number six. All I would have to do is hold down the Windows key and press the number six and Chrome will open up. If I wanted to open Internet Explorer, I would just have to hold down the Windows key and press the number seven. If I wanted to do the same thing with File Explorer, I just hold the Windows key and press the number two. Now this feature becomes even more helpful when you have multiple windows open. What I do is I set my taskbar up so I always have certain icons in certain areas. So I know that Windows Explorer is always at position two on my tab. So if I'm working in another application like Chrome, I don't have to scroll through the using Alt and Tab to scroll through to find the application. If I wanted to go to Windows Explorer, I would just hold down the Windows key and press the number two. And whichever application I'm working in, it would automatically go straight to Windows Explorer. And likewise, if I wanted to jump back to Windows Internet Explorer, I would just hold down the Windows key and press number seven. That would get me back to my Internet Explorer. I would say that that is a very, very helpful tip. Uh, you just have to be a little bit organized with the icons in your taskbar, memorize where they are, and you will be on your way to switching between windows very, very rapidly. Tip number two, Windows Virtual Desktops. This feature I think helps me the most in terms of organizing the work that I'm doing across multiple desktops so that one of my desktops are, pur are purposely created specifically for a specific task. To access uh, your virtual desktops, all you have to do is hold down the Windows key and press the tab button. That brings up your menu. If you look across the top, you will see a list of desktops, the one that you currently have, and then also a plus sign that you can use to create more desktops. As you can see here, I've already created four desktops. As you can see on one of my desktops, I have Adobe Photoshop open. And in this specific desktop, I try to keep all of my creative related programs open in this desktop so that I can, um, you know, do all of my creative work here. And by holding the Windows key and pressing tab, I can move on to my other desktop where you can see I have all of my word processing and productive applications open so that I can, you know, keep all of those organized and specifically for that purpose. And if I wanted to add another application on another desktop, I can just go into this desktop number two and open up Chrome. And you can easily switch between desktops just by hitting the Windows key and the tab button. And also um, you can easily move applications from desktop to desktop. So if I'm at um, desktop two, my Windows browsing desktop, once I hit the Windows key and tab, it will show you all of the applications that you have open in that desktop. And you can easily just grab that application and drag it into another desktop to add it to that, to easily move that application over to that desktop. And by doing that, you can see that the Chrome browser that was in desktop number two is now moved to desktop number four and it is no longer in desktop number two. And if I wanted to grab an application out of one of the desktops and put it in its own desktop, I can go into desktop number four, hit Windows key and tab, grab the Chrome browser from desktop number four, 
drag it onto the plus sign and that will create a new desktop and place the Chrome browser in that desktop. As you can see, virtual desktops is a very powerful tool in terms of keeping you organized and you know, decluttering your, your workspace areas across multiple desktops. I can see you guys using this one. Tip number three, Windows Snap. Now I know you guys probably already know this one, but I do use this one every day. And since this is a video about tips, tricks, and uh, features that I use every day, this had to be on the list. I think this one is the most common one that I use. So if you have more than one window open and you drag the window all the way over to the right side of the screen, you'll see a little snap effect and that window will stick to the right side or whichever side you snap that screen on. After the snap effect has happened, it'll display all of the other open windows so you can choose a window to display side by side. Now you can do this for up to four windows so just by snapping them one in each corner. Now this is a great feature for now this is a great feature for in cases where you need to see uh, multiple windows open at the same time or and that you need to work with all of them at the same time. It's a really great feature. Like I said, I use this every day. Tip number four, transparent window. This one is more for the tech savvy user, I guess. Uh, this one basically if you open up the command prompt, you'll see that most of you probably already know that you can customize the font uh, uh, color of the command prompt. But did you know that if you just go up to the left hand corner of the window, click there and hit properties, then choose the colors tab. And at the bottom of the window, you'll see the opacity section. You can adjust the opacity from 30 all the way up to 100 and I'm going to go ahead and adjust it to 30% and click OK and as you can see the true screen is pretty transparent. Now what do I use this for? Well a lot of times I'll give you an example if I'm on the internet looking at a command prompt tutorial or something that requires me to have both the command prompt window open and a full page of documentation open. I'll just go ahead and pull up any document with some text behind it just so you can have an idea of what I'm working with. So, so if I wanted to follow along with the text on this page and also still type in the commands, what I would do is I would put the command prompt window on top of this window and you can also maximize it also. So I can still have full view of the text that I am uh, referencing while I am typing in all of the um, related commands in my open command prompt that is running in 30% opacity. Tip number five, God mode. For those of you who don't know, God mode is a folder that you can place on your desktop and by naming it a specific name, it creates a shortcut keys to all of the settings in Windows 10. This has been around for a while, but it's um, still available in Windows 10. And I think it's a pretty cool and easy way to access all of your settings. All you have to do is type in this code right here in your folder name. So you may want to pause the video so you can take note of this. I'll have it linked down in the description below, but um, it, it doesn't really matter what the first part is called because you can call it John mode, you can call it any other thing mode, as long as the dot and everything else afterwards that follows is the same. Now to activate God mode, let's start by creating a new folder. Now for the folder name, you just have to put in the text that I showed you earlier and that's it. Once you hit enter, uh, an icon will appear on your desktop. In my case, I have to confirm that I want to merge folders because I already had a God mode created on my desktop before. So when I go ahead and click yes, 
It creates an icon on my desktop, turns that folder into an icon on my desktop, and inside of that icon, you'll find shortcuts to all of Windows settings. You have your autoplay settings, backup and restore settings, date and time setting, devices and printers. As you can see, the list goes on and on. You can have basically all of Windows settings. Now what I use it for the most is to manage credentials manager, which uh, is all of my stored passwords across the internet and networks. And also my network and sharing center, which contains all of my network settings and adapter settings, especially since a lot of this is so difficult to find with the new Windows settings app. I hardly ever use it. I try to always stick with control panel, but this just makes it a lot easier for me to access those, especially if I need to quickly. Tip number six, steps recorder. This one is very helpful when it comes to documenting steps. If you need to document steps for your personal use or if you need to document it for someone else. Now, this is pretty easy to access. All you have to do is uh, hit the search bar and search for steps and steps recorder will pop up. Just click on that and that'll open up a small little window with just a few commands in it. What this is, is this is how you start and stop your recording. So all you have to do is just hit the start record button and what that will do is that'll start to record each step that you make on your PC and it will later on create a document. So if I hit the start record button and I wanted to show you guys how to open not Edge but Internet Explorer and it was not available on your taskbar, I'll show you how to go in. Just hit the start button and search for internet. When the Internet Explorer icon shows up, just click that and that should open up Internet Explorer. And if you go ahead and type in msn.com, yada, 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 bang. So what happens is that creates a document for you when you hit stop recording and it'll document each step along with providing you with screenshots that'll show you each click that you've done in each window. So if you look closely, you'll see the windows icon is highlighted because that's what I clicked on first and you'll see where it says search box was selected and so on and so on. It's a very very useful tool to use if you want to document a procedure for yourself or someone else. And the last tip of the day is a tip that I don't use every single day but I did thought I thought that I would include it here because it is something that I think a lot of people don't know exists and I think it would be very very helpful for you guys if you did know about this uh, specific tool and this tool is called Quick Assist. Now Quick Assist is accessible easily if you just go down and click in the start bar uh, in the search bar and you search for Quick and that should pop up the Quick Assist icon and just click on it and basically what you have is you have the ability to either give assistance or get assistance from or give to assistance to anyone with a Windows 10 PC. Um, this application is a very, very useful application, especially if you have users that sometimes ask you remotely questions how to do something and you want to just get in there and show them or even if you sometimes need help you can get help from someone else now just to get access you will need to sign in to your microsoft account if you don't have one you can easily create one once you enter your microsoft account username and password you will have the ability to generate a uh, code that'll last about 10 minutes. So you have about 10 minutes to give or receive assistance from someone. And this connection is encrypted, so you don't have to worry about your security. It is encrypted. The only thing that uh, would 
and you would worry was the person giving you the assistance so yeah basically um, you need to copy that security code and give it to the person that you're giving assistance to it's pretty cool it's a pretty cool way to you know help people remotely and it works well that's it guys and there you have it seven tips and tricks that I use for Windows 10 on a daily basis if this video was helpful to you please don't forget to like the video and subscribe below you can give me a thumbs up if you liked it or a thumbs down if you didn't like it but go ahead and leave in the comments below some of the tips and tricks that you use on Windows 10 um, on a daily basis I'd like to thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video